Greetings, everyone. This is the nonviolence report for November 19th, in between the election and the inauguration, a very tense transition period. Hopefully, will not be a non transition period. Uh, I want to mention that our film is now the film of the month in Tricycle Magazine. And uh, it, we also are up on Vimeo, or it can be re re rented for a couple of days. And just the title of the film is The Third Harmony. So that should get you to both of those places. And if you uh, are a Buddhist or you have some Buddhist friends, and yes, some of my best friends are Buddhists, <laughs> uh, have them take a look at the article and also the newsletter from Tricycle mentions the film. It does a very good report. And as far as the rest of the world is concerned, uh, interestingly enough, New York, the New Yorker, which actually covered Sri Ishwin's book on Bacha Khan years ago when that came out, is now launched into the world of nonviolence again with an up-to-date study on Erica Chenoweth, Maria Stefan, and about a, or a handful of recent scholars. It, quotes our friend uh, Hardy Merriman. Both Erica and Hardy and Maria, you heard them first on Nonviolence News, by the way. Uh, anyway, Hardy says the same thing that I've been saying, that back when we started, uh, you could read everything that, that was available in the science of nonviolence or the history, the scientific study of nonviolence within social science. And now we just can't keep up. It's pouring out every day. And uh, Erica Chenoweth will have a new book coming out soon. It'll be published early next year, Oxford. And it's called Civil Resistance, What Everyone Needs to Know. Uh, she talks about nonviolent revolutions that have indeed created major societal breakthroughs around the world. But she points out there are very few people who've been exposed to the ideas or or are more interested in nonviolent alternatives. And all you get from them very often is apathy or recourse to violence. So she talks about cases like Thailand in 1992. Now this is interesting because Thailand is in a nonviolent upheaval right now that's been going for several months. I'll say a little bit more about that in a second. And uh, we can compare in this connection, the Czech experience in the famous episode of 1968, when they tried to, it was called the, the Prague Spring, where they tried to resist a Warsaw Pact invasion and protect their reform movement against uh, the rigid forms of communism that were imposed on them by Moscow. And now that movement looks like it failed. But uh, the fact is that it took eight months instead of four days to get the country under control by the Warsaw Pact. And really when the Berlin Wall did fall and the Iron Curtain fell, Czechoslovakia was the country that emerged most unscathed. They came through that transition, that was their transition, they came through it much more nonviolently than some other states. And that was undoubtedly due to that eight months of experience that they had uh, back in 1968. So here you have Thailand, which has really been convulsed by partly violent, partly nonviolent upheavals down, down the years, partly because they still have a monarchy and they are um, relying on past experience. Again, we'll say more about other things that they're relying on. But uh, Erica Chenoweth in her book talks about the fact, which is really helpful, that successful nonviolent campaigns generally did four things, okay? Uh, they mobilized mass popular participation, which is not possible if you turn to violence. They encouraged defection by people in positions of authority, like economic and business elites, security forces, even members of the opposition party. And that's called a 
taking down the pillars of support of a regime. Very important to know that technique. And they tended not to rely solely on mass demonstrations. A lesson we're trying hard to get people to learn right now. Instead, they use methods of dispersal instead of collection, makes you much less vulnerable. And uh, they relied on things like boycotts, non-cooperation, strikes. Finally, and most importantly, they remained disciplined. They held on to their nonviolence, even when repression escalated. And that is exactly what has been happening recently in Thailand. And there's a very good article in Truth Out titled, Women and Students are Leading Thailand's Fight for Democracy. So go and have a look at that article. Now, to mention a few other resources are coming available, there's going to be a nonviolence news happy hour tomorrow, November 20th, from 4 to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, nonviolence news is probably the best entree landing page for that. Uh, December 12th, still, still relying on our friend Rivera Sun. December 12th, uh, there will, she will be giving a soul force retreat with Veronica Polikaric and Robert Farrell. And you can register for that one through Pache Ebene. That's P-A-C-E-E-B-E-N-E dot -E -E org slash events so forth. And then um, uh, an organization we haven't commented on very much, World Beyond War, they have a resource now for those who are looking to bring nonviolence to the media, which is where we began that New Yorker article in our uh, tricycle appearance. So if you go to uh, worldbeyondwar.org, you should be able to get to something called Organizing Guide Billboards, Organizing Guide Billboards, PDF. There is a lot more that's coming available, but we only have time today for this brief selection. So I'd like to mention a, a couple of three news items. Domestically, there's some huge news on the uh, climate front, one of the very most important. Nearly four dozen faith institutions, that's 47 institutions from 21 countries, have now announced that they will be divesting from fossil fuels. So this is the largest joint divestment by religious leaders ever in history, as far as we know. Uh, on the other hand, we have this, uh, we mentioned before, there are several anti-nuclear activists who trespassed and did some uh, property destruction at a U.S. naval base. They are on their way to prison, but one of them, who happens to be a granddaughter of Dorothy Day, whom I have met, Martha Hennessy, she said, to be clear, these weapons are not private property. They belong to the people of the United States, they belong to me, to you, to us. More uh, on the election, Wayne County, Detroit has gotten into the news because the Republicans on the certification board, it's a board of four people, two Republicans, and they refused to certify the results. But they were forced, if you will, to do so by civic action, so a large amount of uh, protest. And if they had stuck to that, a violent position, they would have invalidated millions of votes, 80% of which are votes by African Americans. And uh, Choose Democracy has the coverage of that event. So, just to look around the world a little bit, we reported last time about a Sahrawi protest uh, at a site called Guer Guerat, which is a border zone and a disputed area between the Western Sahara proper and Morocco, which since 1975 has moved in and occupied the Sahrawis. 
and uh, it's a very serious situation. And most recently to update us there, the protesters have been expelled from Guerrera. So the question from a nonviolent point of view is, okay, now what is the next step? We do not want to go into a nonviolent action with just one trick. Uh, you need to know what to do if you are thwarted. And I can tell you many cases where lacking that backup has led to the complete collapse of a movement, which leads in turn to the public perception that nonviolence doesn't work. So I do not know the answer to that question, but I hope they were there thinking about it. Now, one thing that they will have to deal with in order to move forward nonviolently is the Polisario Front, which is an armed uh, independence movement. And just recently, on a Friday, uh, armed forces from Morocco moved into that buffer strip because they, there had been weeks of what they called provocations from members of the Pol Polisario Front. And as we know from Nagler's law, a little bit of violence really obscures the character of an otherwise nonviolent movement. There, however, as we were taught, saying about Czechoslovakia and Thailand, there are episodes of citizen, almost impromptu citizen interventions between Polisario Front and Moroccan armed forces by just groups of civilians, in some cases, mothers with baby carriages that have actually prevented war. And if you go way back in history, back to the medieval period, there's a story about a princess in that part of the world who uh, led a nonviolent struggle that was extremely impressive and extremely successful. We'll just mention a little bit about what's going on in Thailand. I mentioned there is repression from the police, but that government repression has backfired against the security forces. So there's been a surge of peaceful demonstrations as mentioned, led by women, youth, and LBGTQ people. And I want to just mention some gems. The military has staged over a dozen successful coup in the past century, but now they face a dilemma. They used water cannons against people, protesters, against peaceful protesters, and those backfired, driving more people into the streets. There are some leaders uh, who were the first ones to talk publicly about the role of the monarchy in Thai politics uh, who are arrested. They were the charismatic leaders of the movement. At this point, they're in jail. So the movement now maintains a more leaderless structure, which again, you know, they had a successful fallback. And of course, the Thing I always like to, pro to highlight and I always like to get inspiration from, quote, of course we learned from the movement in Hong Kong. So one of the things they learned was when we see something provocative, we walk the other way. So they've been doing everything from flash mobs to mock fashion runways. That was a new one on me. And uh, they're pro-democracy movement is employing all these creative tactics to drive democratic change. But uh, the very latest of today is that the Thai parliament has refused to approve uh, measures which would have limited the power of the monarchy. And so again, the students are saying the struggle will go on. And we will go on with our nonviolence news Hope to see you, hear you again here. Thanks very much.